is just doing my scales exercise today. Actually, uh, what this video is going to be about is learning about scales and chords. And I have a formula for making any chord that you need to know how to make. And so that's what this video is going to be about. And also at mycrownmusic.net lesson 23 you want to download the document about the formulas for making any chord that you need, well, basic chords that most accordion players are going to need. Uh, I've got this all printed out for you and this will be so helpful because we're going to learn how to make up chords and uh, we're going to learn about scales and we're going to learn about whole steps and half steps. And so this is the kind of thing that when you want to learn how to improvise, when you want to learn how to add fill-ins into your music, you know, you're beyond the basics and you'd like to snazz up your music a little bit, well, this is the stuff you've got to know. Uh, it may seem like uh, boring stuff, but it's like when I was doing those scales, it reminds me when I was in college and I'd walk past the row of practice rooms, the piano practice rooms, and I'd hear scales going up and down the scale, la 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 And it was, whether it was the piano room or whether it was people singing and, and practicing their vocal uh, scales. So these are necessary skills that uh, you need to know if you want to advance in your playing. So we're going to move next to a keyboard of mine, um, but I want to explain one more thing about the accordion. So let me come in here a little closer. I'm using an FR4X today, which is a digital accordion, and it's a 120 bass accordion. And just uh, for somebody who is an absolute beginner who might be seeing this, um, about your uh, basses in your left hand, you have six rows of buttons on a 120 bass accordion and the second row in from the bellows is what's called a fundamental bass so this one with a little notch in it is a C bass and the uh, bass buttons go up in fifths, fifth intervals, so every five notes so C and then five notes higher than C is G Five notes higher than G is D. Five notes higher than D is A, etc. So that's the fundamental bass row. And you can do all sorts of bass solos um, using that row and the one in front of it. The one in front of it, every bass note is one third higher, one third interval higher than the fundamental. So C, the one with the notch in it, and the one right in front of it is E. If I go up to G, the one in front of it, the contrabass, it's called contrabass row, is B. If I go down to F, the one in front of it is A. So, do scales and they are that's all in patterns <laughs> Four. so there's all kinds of interesting bass things that you can do with the bass side now the next one in the Stradella bass system, which is what most of you are going to be familiar with as Stradella, is the next button over from the C fundamental bass is the C major chord. And with one finger, 
you're actually turning on three notes inside the accordion. So that one finger is playing three notes. For a piano player, this is a heck of an accomplishment when they can do this. Or when they can do this. Because that piano player is having to jump from da 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 and they're having to grab three notes to grab the chord and one note to grab the bass note. So the accordion is kind of like the easy play instrument because with just two fingers, you've got a whole accompaniment going. All right, so the major row. Now minor is the next row back. And again, it's three notes playing, but it's three different notes. And then another row back is the seventh chord. And one more row back is the diminished. Uh, in most of today's music, we don't have a whole lot of diminished chord, but we have a lot of seventh chords, and we have a lot of minor chords, of course, and we have a lot of major chords. Okay, so now we're going to explain how this works and the formulas how it works in the right hand. So a major chord is, well, here, let's turn on a different sound. There's a C major chord in the root position. And to make it minor, you take the middle note of the chord and you lower it one half step. There's the major. That's the two most important chords that you need to know. Um, in addition, we're going to uh, talk uh, eventually about diminished chords and seventh chords. But we'll get to all those things. So the next thing I want to do is take you to a keyboard instrument and show you the um, uh, formula for how to figure out any major chord or minor chord today. So I'll be right back. Okay, so if you go to mycrownmusic.net, mycrownmusic.net, lesson 23, and we're going to be talking, you want to download the document for uh, understanding chords. Go to mycrownmusic.net, lesson 23. Uh, you'll have all of these uh, uh, sheets that I'm going to show you here. Uh, you'll have your own copies of it. So the first thing that we need to understand is tone numbers of a major scale. So this is the C major scale that we're all familiar with, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, or if I play it on the piano. And all of those notes have a tone number. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the octave. So the first tone of the major scale is always called the root. And that note is never played flat or sharp. Uh, and, you know, I mean, we can name it B flat, but you don't change it from there. And this will make more sense as I talk a little bit more about this. Um, but uh, the examples, the easy example here is that the C major chord is composed of the root, third, and fifth tones of the C major scale. So what that means is that the notes in the C major scale, or any major scale, are made of the number one tone from the scale, the number three tone from the scale, and the number five tone from the scale. All right, and there is also a formula for determining any major scale so the next thing that I should mention here, even though I don't have a printout of this, is what is the distance between each of these notes? So, uh, you know, we have half steps and whole steps. So a half step is the distance from any note to the very next note. So I'm going to focus on the keyboard here and show this to you. So I'll be right back. Okay, so now we're looking at my piano keyboard. And so we're talking about whole steps and half steps. 
So in that C major scale, here are the notes again. Now, the distance from this note, C, to C sharp is a half step. The distance from this note to this note, C to B, is also a half step. So a half step is always the distance from one note to the very next, whether it's up or down or black or white. So the distance from this C to this D is a whole step because there's a half step, there's a half step. The distance from this D to this E is another whole step because you've got half step, half step. The distance from E to F, there's no black key in the middle, that's also a half step even though it's two white keys. This is from F to G is a whole step because there's a black key in the middle, it's, it's two half steps. And from uh, A to or G to A is a whole step, and the distance from A to B is a whole step, and finally half step. So the formula for making any major scale is whole step. And you should write this down. Be taking notes because I didn't make a a. Um, a sheet on this, it's not in your reference thing, so you're going to have to take a note about this one. So to build any major scale, it's whole step from the first one to the second one, whole step from the second one to the third note, half step from the third key to the fourth, whole step from the fourth key to the fifth, whole step from the fifth key to the sixth, whole step from the sixth key to the seventh, and half step from the seventh key to the octave. Okay, so now we've discussed that, whole steps and half steps. And we need to know this, this is really important for understanding how to build any major, minor, or any kind of scale. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, so we've discussed the makeup of a major scale. Now, we're going to go to the next page here, and we're going to discuss what is a major chord in the root position. So in the root position that means that the name of the chord is the lowest tone. So this is the tones that are in the C major scale. So we have C, E, and G. And to find out how to make a major scale, or, a, or uh, I'm sorry, not a scale, a chord, you have the name of the uh, chord, and then it says here, so first, uh, play the name of the chord, and in the example, uh, this one is C, which equals the root of the chord, and it's also called the root position of the chord. And then the next note that you need is the third of the chord, which is up four half steps from the root, and this is called a major third interval. And then the next one that you need is the fifth of the chord, and it is up three half steps from the third. So uh, let's, we're going to go back to the keyboard now, and we're going to point that out, how to find that. Okay, so again, we're making our C major chord in the root position. So we need a C. And then the third of the chord is up four half steps, so it's the distance from here, from C to C sharp is one half step, so that's one, two, three, four. So that's how we find the third of the chord, and then the distance fr uh, from the third to the fifth is up three half steps, so from the E it's one, two, three. So that puts my C major chord in its root position. Okay, now, to get C minor chord, it is the name of the chord again, C, and then instead of going up four half steps, you go up three half steps, so one, two, three. And then, to get the fifth of the chord, you go up 
From here, you go up four half steps. So one, two, three, four. So that makes C minor chord. So next, I'm going to use, uh, let's say, a chord that you would rarely use in accordion playing, um, in most easy music. Let's find a C sharp major chord. So, okay, so the first thing I need is a C sharp. And then I need to go up four half steps. So, one, two, three, four. And then I need to go up three half steps. So, from here, one, two, three. Oops. Yeah, one, two, three. So, there is the C sharp major chord. So, let's say you need an E major chord. So, first I'll need an E, and then I need to go up four half steps. One, two, three, four. And then I need to go up three half steps. One, two, three. And let's say you need an F sharp major chord. All right, so F sharp, and then go up four half steps. One, two, three, four. And then up three half steps. One, two, three. All right, so that's major chords. Now a minor chord, um, the rule is you go up uh, three half steps and then four half steps. So let's find D minor. So here's D, and I need to go up three half steps. So one, two, three, and then up four half steps. One, two, three, four. So there's D minor chord. Now again, these are all in the root position. So what does it mean when you have inversions? So I'm going to go back to the C major chord in the root position. And I'm going to take that lowest C. And I'm going to take my finger off of that and play a C up an octave. You still have all the same tones in the chord, but you've rearranged them. So now this is a C chord in the first inversion. And I'm going to do that one more time. I'm going to take the E and put that up an octave. So now I have a C chord in the second inversion. And then, let's see, i to make sure I don't go out of the range of, no, uh, you can play it up an octave again. Or uh, there's chord arpeggios where you're playing. F chord. Back to C chord. And you can do inversions on them. So like here was C chord in the root position, but Let's play it in the first inversion. And of course, you've heard a lot of piano music. Uh, the one that comes to my mind right away is Oh Holy Night, with that background going with arpeggiated chords. Okay, so I hope that uh, you didn't find this too confusing and that you'll get some value out of your beginning understanding of how to work with major and minor chords and how to find any one. And of course, I'm going to continue this series with uh, more types of chords, augmented chords, diminished chords, seventh chords. And so we'll cover that in another video. But uh, I hope you have downloaded the document at lesson 23 at micronmusic.net and you will find all of this information very helpful. Uh, and Aaron, this is not the kind of thing that overnight you're going to go, oh, I know all this stuff. Um, this will take you quite some time, years, to develop all kinds of interesting little runs and little fill-ins, but you need this basic chord and scale information to understand what notes work with what chords and how to fill things in. So thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again in the next video.